Welcome to Magnificent Living Today. Are you living a life of optimal health? Do you want to make changes in your life? Do you need help setting and achieving goals? Are you ready to reform and reshape your mind, body, and spirit? Are you looking for more balance in your life? Many of us are thinking about starting a better lifestyle program, both for ourselves and or our family. We all know how difficult it can be to motivate others when we ourselves are not motivated. Sometimes we all need a little help reaching our goals. And that's why Magnificent Living today is here for you. Welcome to Magnificent Living Today and Happy Valentine's Day. I'm very excited. I have Casey Ford here, author of uh, Showers of Blessings. Casey, yes. welcome. And Jennifer Frazier from Balance Your Heart is here. Yep. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. So we're going to talk about the 21 Steps to Magnificent Living. We're going to get just, just try to get seven in today. And then we're going to talk about love, <laughs> which is appropriate for Valentine's Day. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. The thing that annoys you is teaching you patience. Anyone who abandons you is teaching you how to stand up on your own two feet. Anything that angers you is teaching you forgiveness and compassion. Anything that has power over you is teaching you how to take your power back. Anything you hate is for teaching you unconditional love. Anything you fear is for teaching you courage to overcome your fear. Anything that you can't control is teaching you to let go and trust the universe. Welcome back to Magnificent Living Today. Again, Casey Ford is here with me and Jennifer Frazier. And first, we're going to just start by, we can't remove the elephant from the room. Let's talk about Whitney, because we have to do that. Yeah. And uh, on Friday night, before I went to bed, for, I got a uh, posting on Facebook that Whitney had sang with Kelly Price. So I went online, checked it out, and it looked like Whitney was on the, on the mend. I, I looked, I said she gained some weight, she looked great, and I'm, I'm one of those Whitney rooters. I've always just been in her corner, yeah. and uh, the next day I was sitting watching television and a friend called and said she had passed, and it was almost like, that's not possible because I was just with her last yeah. night. Mm -hmm. And so what I'd like to talk to you both about is the profound uh, effect that people who we never meet mm -hmm. have on our lives. I think her her voice and just her soul um, was just inspirational, and it, mm. it crossed genders, it crossed race. It was just this voice, and when you heard it, you're like, "Wow, who is that?" Mm. And she just left a legacy. I mean, mm. you know, there never there will never be another Whitney. I think she had great background. Her mom came out of uh, the church, a gospel singer. Mm. Her aunt, her godmother, they were all in the music industry. So, I mean, to be that deep rooted, um, of course, that's going to leave um, some scars for some people to come. Mm. And I know that listening to her music, growing up with her music over the years, you just feel the strong connection yeah, to her. Yeah. It's like when I'm going through, you know, the ups and downs, I mean, Whitney's saying a lot about love. And mm. so you can really connect with her on that level. And even if I didn't have the words to say it, her song, you know, set the tone, it set the mood. And so you just felt like this, this connection with this woman um, who had such a powerful, amazing voice. It felt like she was a friend. It yeah. felt like yeah. she was yeah. part of the family. Mm -hmm. And so to hear the news of her passing, it was just shocking and, and devastating. And, mm -hmm. and we will all miss her. And, and not to be able to hear that voice again, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's a painful, um, it's a painful thing. And it also reminds us, I think, to just appreciate life mm -hmm. and to appreciate every moment we have because we don't know, you know, yeah. we just don't know when it, it'll come to an end. When I equated it, I thought what is profound to me is she is part of the soundtrack of my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met Alita Adams about three or four months ago. I, I went to see her, saw her perform, and she had probably signed autographs for 300 people. And I was the last person in line. And I got there and I put my arm around her and I said, don't worry, I'm not going to take a lot of your time. We've already spent a lot of time together. Aww. And she stopped for a minute. And she, her head went back and then she got what I was saying. Is that she's played into the soundtrack of my life, mm -hmm. just like Whitney. Mm -hmm. How will I know? There have been days when I just want to say, 
how will I know? Yeah. Um, when you're feeling real good, I'm the queen of the night, or <laughs> I'm every woman, you know? Yeah. And interesting, I was listening to Valerie Simpson talk about how her and Nick Ashford wrote that song, mm -hmm. another person that we lost this year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think in the, uh, the music industry, the black music industry, it's a shame how many people that we lose and how young we lose people. Mm -hmm. But I think it should be a constant reminder to us of how fortunate we are to have the days that we have. Yeah. Yeah and uh, support, to be around the right support group. Mm -hmm. Because just like with Michael Jackson, days before his death, his family couldn't get to him because his entourage had him locked up. Mm -hmm. And they said the same thing about Whitney. Whitney was around a lot of people, but nobody stopped her. And I was telling Jennifer this morning, it's kind of like Donald Trump's hair. You think with all the money he has, somebody would say, <laughs> Donald, <laughs> this hair is just way, out. it's over the top, come on, is it, am I wrong? <laughs> is, that, is that a rug? <laughs> <laughs> and I don't ever have to be famous, so it's all right. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. And, you know, we also lost Don Cornelius within the same week. So, yeah. Mr. Mm -hmm. Peason. So we lost, you know, a lot of uh, greats uh, in, in a week's time. So it was just, it really affected the music industry. And, of course, you know, Whitney was not just a singer, but she was also a great actress. Mm -hmm. I mean, I loved her in The Preacher's Wife. Mm. And you cannot forget the bodyguard. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> every girl's dream. Yeah, everybody needs to have a bodyguard. Right? Yes. <laughs> well, Whitney, we will always love you. <clears throat> Twenty-one steps to magnificent living. I start off with a little poem that I wrote for the first seven steps, and it says, "To be realistic, to be in control of my response, to have faith that everything will work out in my favor, to take care of my body as an act of love, to keep my eyes and ears open, to always find the lesson." to dream wide awake in color, to be honest with myself and with others, to be optimistic, to always see the glass as half full. Oh, yeah. So let's start with being in control of my response. And the first uh, step in the 21 Steps of Magnificent Living is being proactive. Mm -hmm. Now, when I wrote my material, proactive wasn't a word that was in the dictionary yet. It wasn't an acne cream. <laughs> it was simply a word that I had to kind of put together mm -hmm. to explain what I'm, I was uh, talking about being proactive versus being reactive. Mm -hmm. And being reactive is putting your hand on a flame and pulling it right away, where proactivity would allow you to put your hand on the flame, think, oh, this is really hot. I probably should move my hand and then respond. So I like to break the word responsibility in half, and it's our ability to respond. So let's talk about your ability to respond to things in your life. Yeah, I mean, I, I think how you respond is the, is the key to everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, d things happen and you go through your ups and downs and it's having that, um, that mental mindset of, like you said, everything is going to be okay, all is well. Relying on my faith, relying on my inner circle, you know, the people who support me and carry me through those tough times. A lot of times when I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, mm -hmm. you know, it's getting the support and the help when I need it, you know, not waiting till I spiral out of control, but, you know, being proactive and, mm -hmm. and turning to the resources that I have to get that help. That, that's what responding is. Mm -hmm. Anything to say about responsibility in your life? Just taking responsibility, yeah. where, lessons you've learned. For me, when I think of uh, proactive, it means I'm going to try to prevent something from happening. Mm -hmm. you know, if, I, if I already know that, like my daughter now is getting ready for SATs and things of that sort. So I said, you know, we have to be proactive. You need to study ahead of time versus waiting the night before trying to crash and do well on your SAT. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're going to be proactive. We're not going to get a bad result and then react to that. We're going to mm -hmm. try to, you know, make things work from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So that goes with responsibility. You have to take responsibility for your actions. What can I do to prevent something from happening? Instead of reacting, waiting for something to happen, then I'm going to respond and react to something. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a friend my, this weekend about what wisdom teaches you. And we're going to talk about wisdom and knowledge in a minute. But mm -hmm. what wisdom has taught me is in the realm of reaction. I've been a reactor for most of my life. And so things happened in my life and I would go right into the emotion of it and jump off the handle. And I caught myself a lot of times I would scream and I would yell. And that was one of my traits that I have abolished. Mm -hmm. um, but I say once you reach 50, you realize that it's just not that heavy. It's just why carry that around with me and to yell and scream only flusters me. Yeah. Yeah. I have a brother who knows exactly how to get underneath my skin and he purposely does that. And for years, 
he'd come visit, and within 30 minutes, I'd catch myself in that mode of screaming and yelling. And one day, I just kind of examined, why is it that we go through that back and forth? Well, one, it's our, it's our tradition from our childhood. Mm -hmm. he, he always traditionally upset me, and he knew exactly how to push my buttons. So one day, I just decided to move my buttons. So, yeah, so what, I, that's it was just exactly it. I moved the buttons. And when I moved the buttons and he went to push the button, I said, ah, see, I'm not screaming and yelling because I got this. I realize that you do this in order for me to react. Mm -hmm. And I've learned the difference between react and respond. So learning the difference between react and respond has alleviated a whole lot for me and it's reduced my stress level. Uh, that's really key what you said, Carl, because... Um you know, I noticed a lot of things. Number one, you started to pay attention. You started mm. to understand, okay, mm. my brother has a way of pushing those buttons and mm. how can I, um, what can I do so that I don't respond in the same manner? So mm. you're starting to pay attention. Mm. Also, you're starting to realize, okay, what those buttons are and decide choosing, I'm gonna become non-reactive to that. Mm. And so that disables that, that pattern so that, mm you know, when someone pushes that button, I'm not gonna react the same way anymore. Mm. And so you don't have that power over me, mm. and, you know, to control those feelings and emotions. I am choosing, mm. I am making the choice. To take my power back. To take my power back yeah. to change my behavior. Mm. And a lot of people don't get that, that the second you take your power back, mm -hmm. you render them powerless. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the, the power that you give them is the reaction the exact same thing that they were expecting you to do. And yeah. when you take away the reaction and you just go, okay, I'll just respond to that, they have to stop. And they have to re-examine themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And I catch him, him less and less trying to upset me because he knows it's not going to happen. Exactly. Because yeah. yeah. a lot of times you're just adding fuel to their fire and you don't want to do that. Because right. you know, people mm -hmm. will treat you the way you allow them to treat you. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And I always say it's not, not, life is 90% what happens, 10% is only really what happens. The 90% is how you interpret what happens. Mm -hmm. So your interpretation of what is the truth, what is your truth? Right. What is the truth for you? How did that really affect your life? Mm -hmm. And that little comment, yeah, maybe it might have bothered me when I was 10. Mm -hmm. And I can carry that with me until I'm 90 if I choose to. Mm -hmm. But I can acknowledge it and say, you know what? I no longer need to carry that. I no longer have the need for that. And when I drop the need for it, then I can respond in a different way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the next step was be faithful which is easy for me because I rely on my faith just because I have a shower of blessings every single day. <laughs> <laughs> but really, life has taught me that everything is going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I come up against situations often in life where I have to push the pause button and say, okay, I know, like you said, God has gotten me this far. He's not going to stop working with me now. Mm -hmm. And so I have to go back to pause. Maybe this may not be perfect at this moment, mm -hmm. but God... Again, they, uh, people say this is hard. God doesn't give us any more than we can handle, and I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, have, having that faith that all is well, all is going to be okay. And a lot of times I think back to what were some of the challenges earlier in my life. I didn't know how I was going to overcome it. I didn't know mm. how I was going to get through it, but somehow I did. That was mm. God carrying me through. Mm. And so the same challenges that I face today, he hasn't abandoned me. You know, mm. he's still yeah. going to continue to carry me through, so... Mm. Yeah. Having that faith is important. I find a lot of people, though, will say, I'm going to give it up to God, but God needs help. Mm -hmm. And I say, we're God's hands. And hands and feet. And yeah. ears and eyes, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's all about participating in that. I can be faithful. I can say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this with God. I'm going to take it to God, but I can't leave it in God's hands because God gave me the hands to do the work. Mm -hmm. So I have to go to him for counsel but I can't expect him to be the hands. And some people, they forget, and they just say, well, I don't know why God let this happen to me. Mm -hmm. And I always think God didn't let anything happen to you. The, the situations that happen in your life, they're situations that were going to come up. Now, how we, again, we would respond, we react, and then reacting by faith. When I react by faith, I say, you know, I look the devil right in the face. Because every time I've tried to get to a new level in my life, mm -hmm. the devil showed up. And prior in my life, when the devil showed up, I would fight him. I would sit there and I'd shake and I'd fight and I'd be like, no, devil, you're not going to stop me from doing this because this is what I'm going to do. And then I realized that that's what the devil is for. It's distraction. Mm -hmm. And so a friend of mine, I was going through a situation and I was like, the devil showed up. I know he's here. I don't know what to do with him. 
And she said to me that she had gone to church the week before and the minister had talked about another level, another devil. And I will always remember that. And the other thing that Oliver said to me once is, without tests, there is no testimony. And those two things alone show me that I can make it through any situation if I look at life that way. This is a test, but until I pass my test, I have no testimony. Because if you don't go through trials and tribulations, how do you know that you have faith? Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's when we're the most tested. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, we, we have referenced showers of blessings, rain, you of the soul, but the whole premise behind it is stepping out of fear and walking by faith. Mm-hmm. That's what the book is all about. Yeah, I love in your, uh, your bio, you say you're a faith walker. Yeah. And definitely you have to be a faith walker because you have to walk in it. You have to live in it. There are a lot of people that say, oh, I have faith. You know, and it lives in a book that's called the Bible. But other than that, they don't walk in it. Mm -hmm. They don't live in it. A situation comes up in their life and they let everything fall apart. But a faithful person would never let that happen. Mm -hmm. Because faith shows me that, like you said, God carried me this far. I love that. God's carried me this far. He is not going anywhere. And, you know, I always say that you don't have to be. Uh, religious or spiritual to have faith. Have faith that the day is going to turn out okay. Mm-hmm. Have faith in yourself. Have faith in your, your team, your coworkers, the people in your life, because when you have faith in others, when you g- show faith, you get faith back. Mm-hmm. And so faith is something that's like a mirror. When I show you that I believe in you and I spiritually am connected to that, things are going to work out. They're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one is be well. And be well means mind, body, and spirit. And I, I, I get frustrated because uh, so many times I talk to people about being well and they think wellness comes in a bottle. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Or a pill. <laughs> or a pill. Exactly. And it doesn't. You know, it's about taking care of yourself at a higher level. Mm-hmm. Every single day being extremely conscious of taking care of yourself. I saw a great study this morning on the news. They said eat dessert with breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> no arguments here. <laughs> But really, they had a control group of 30 people each side, and they all dieted. And some people were given a 350-calorie breakfast that didn't include breakfast, and they didn't include dessert. And they lost weight in the beginning, but they found over time the people who ate dessert for breakfast over time lost more weight. And, of course, that only makes sense when you really break it down, because the more calories you have early on in the day, your body thinks it's going to get all of those calories. Mm-hmm. So you, your body automatically th- thinks it's going to starve if you don't feed it for breakfast. Mm-hmm. So then it starts to hold on to all the calories, because it thinks this is all the calories I'm going to get all day long. Mm-hmm. So it goes into a panic, and then you, you gain weight. And like most people, they get home at the end of the day. Now they've had all their frustrations, everything has happened, and what do they do? They sit down in front of that television and they eat. And that's probably the worst, why we know that's the worst time to eat, because that's the time the, calorie, the calories are going to jump up on you and turn into fat. Oh, taking care of yourself also means uh, physically and spiritually. Physically, it's not that hard. I talk to people all the time, they're like, I can't make it to an exercise class, I can't do this, I can't do that. And like you said, People should all over themselves. (laughs) They can't all over themselves also because the matter for me is get up and take a walk. Walk up and down the stairs. I mean, everything is available to you if you open up your mind to it. And it doesn't cost anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, hydrate yourself. I've talked about that before. Drink water and fill yourself with that natural source that is your body is 70 percent water. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we are hydrated. And when you're hydrated, you're happier. When you're happier, your day flows better. Then you can follow your faith and you are doing a whole lot better at responding opposed to reacting. Yeah. You know, water is a natural cleanser as well. Mm -hmm. Some people drink it because it cleanses your body. Mm. Okay. So so I'll have a side of eggs and chocolate cake? (laughs) (laughs) We should try that for just two weeks and see what happens. Chocolate cake with your eggs and then we'll go from there. All right. Number four is to be wise. And this is the difference between being knowledgeable and wisdom. Because I know people that know everything. They have every fact in the world in their head, but they bumble through life. And you think, well, how could this person with all of this knowledge fail or stumble? But it's all about learning how to take what you learn and then use it as wisdom. And wisdom has shown me this. Knowledge will tell me a lot of things, Mm -hmm. but you can be told, we all know you can be told lots of things, but until you take it in, 
to your spirit, into your soul, into you, and say, now I'm going to take this back, and then I'm going to share it with Jennifer. I'm going to share it with KC. Now I'm sharing knowledge, but I'm also sharing wisdom because this is, what's, this is how life has happened for me. And I love sharing my wisdom with younger people because I think that uh, if I was a younger person in these days and times, I would feel extremely distracted because oh, yeah. I can look back at a time when, you know, you sat with your grandmother in front of the warm stove and, you know, you ate whatever comfort foods, but they were real foods. And Gina talked about that because real foods, things that we can distinguish, they were okay. It's the things that now are so processed. They process grandma's uh, chicken pot pie. Now you can buy grandma's chicken pot pie at any store, but it's not the way grandma made it. You know, some of the ingredients that they have in that pot pie, grandma wouldn't recognize. Mm -hmm. So it's, just, yeah, so it's going back and realizing that, you know, um, being well, being wise, uh, pulling all of those things into my spirit are going to make me better, but it's going to help me be a better representative and being a be better representative helps me share that with you and you and you and everybody else. Yeah, and I think a lot of times um, intellectually we might know something, mm -hmm. but like you said, we don't embrace it. We're not applying it to our life, and that makes all the difference. I mean, just because you know, you may know it, but you're not doing it. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously a disconnect there, and so we need to bridge the gap, and and so that we can start, you know, applying that that wisdom in every area of our life, and we're able to share that more and more. It's always like the fat nutritionist, you know? You meet, <laughs> you're like, you went to school to study what? <laughs> you know, the fat exercise instructor. We know they're out there. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with being heavy. There's a difference between being heavy, heavy and healthy, and overweight and obese. And we've got to distinguish, especially in our community, because, you know, people will, uh, I was getting my nails done, and there were two huge, ladies that came in and they were all decorated up and they got their nails done and I thought they went through all that they decorated their body their face their nails their toes but they didn't take the time just to take care of themselves and you can you can decorate it but until you actually go in there and try to fix it nothing's going to change mm -hmm. so I, always, I I beg people you know before you decorate <laughs> work on the canvas <laughs> um, being honest easy Easier said than done. I always say I'm going to be honest with myself first, then I can be honest with others. And I catch myself many times uh, confronted with a situation where I know better and I try to convince myself of something different. We're, we're very good at doing that. I know that I shouldn't do this, but uh, I'm going to legitimize it by saying that I didn't know or, you know, my Angela said when I knew better, I did better. You know, the better, the better you equip yourself, the better that you'll do. Mm -hmm. But it's very easy to allow external forces, uh, external knowledge. You know, you turn on the television and you hear something that you know isn't true. And people will pull that back in and say, well, I saw it on television. Just because so it must be true. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, yeah. And not everything you see on television is the truth. The last one is be optimistic. And for me, that's such an easy piece. I'm optimistic, optimistic every single day of my life. I wake up in the morning and I say, okay, life, what now? Let's get moving. And I really do naturally flow. I don't force my flow. I don't wake up in the morning and say, okay, now I have to be happy because now I have to go. Last night when, Jennifer, when I called Jennifer, I left her a message and just said, I'm Whitney devastated. <laughs> we'll talk tomorrow. And it was okay to be. And knowing that, okay, tomorrow I will be able to pick myself back up and be here and do this, but also allowing myself the space to be Whitney miserable, because that was just more than I was ready to, to take at that particular moment. Mm -hmm. But um, being optimistic is not every single second. It's a collection of the times in your life. And then going back and being able, I say I keep a little file cabinet of all the wonderful things that have happened to me. And then I have a file cabinet of all the terrible things that have happened to me. And if, when I can cross-reference, then I realize, one, that there is a God. <laughs> and two, it's going to be okay. You know, that, that the, just as many horrible things have happened to me, wonderful things have happened to me. And if I take the knowledge, if I take the knowledge that things always eventually worked out. I might have had a struggle. I might have had a couple of scrapes or, you know, lumps or bumps in the middle of it. But at the end, at the other side of the tunnel, I came out a stronger, better person. 
I talked to a friend who was out of work and he was talking about all of his troubles and everything was so heavy. And he said the reason that he hadn't worked out was because he was just too stressed out. He just didn't feel good. And I said to him that when I feel low or when things come up in my life that seem unsurmountable, I go automatically into the gym and start working out because I realize that sometimes I cannot be stronger emotionally. I can't be stronger in my mind or in my conviction. So I just need to get stronger in my body. And I know that by getting stronger in my body, eventually I'll be able to use that strength and push it out into other avenues of my life. Yeah, I mean, optimism is key. I think a, a central key to life, you know, mm -hmm. seeing that glass as half full. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like you, I have what I call a smile file. So, <laughs> you, know, um, you know, when good things, I keep a record of the good things that happen, um, you know, the comments that I get and so on and so forth. So that when I'm having those days, I, c I can go back to my yeah. smile file and, yeah. and take a look at that. And you know, that helps perk me up. But also what you said, Carl, um, a lot of times, you know, we're going through our struggles and, and things are going on in our life. I think what's key is finding like the smallest thing that I can do. You know, it, you may not reach that goal, but mm -hmm. uh, of whatever it is, but what's the smallest thing that I could do? And, and in your, in your instance, you found that, okay, I can work my body, mm -hmm. I can exercise. You know, mm -hmm. right now, I don't have all the answers, mm -hmm. but the smallest thing I can do right now mm -hmm. is walk. I can mm -hmm. work out. And mm -hmm. that, in turn, helps me to feel good, and then I can start to look at all the other areas mm -hmm. and be more proactive about it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think um, when you have uh, positive energy and you release that into the universe, it comes back to you. Mm -hmm. Tenfold. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. no one wants to be around somebody that's negative all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody has to be the encourager. Somebody has to know that whatever you're going through, uh, don't make that you're bigger than it needs to be. And mm -hmm. sometimes you just blow things out of proportion, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think we walk by fear a lot of times, but not by faith. Um, mm -hmm. And we have to, knowledge is good, but as we all discuss, um, wisdom is the action. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to put, we have to make everything a verb. We've got to put mm -hmm. everything into action to yeah. make things happen. Because having great thoughts are nice, mm -hmm. but it's when you put those thoughts into action, that's when things really start to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I love that because I know people who have positive quotes that they go by mm -hmm. each and every day, mm -hmm. and every day they need a new one. And yeah. I think, you know, I really don't need a new one every day. I love them, and I, mm -hmm. I collect quotes. I, I love quotes. I love listening to how... Uh, other people interpret their lives. Mm -hmm. And you know, you read, I read a great quote by Judy Garland this morning and it was about love. And it was about, and I, and I dedicated to Whitney Houston and she said that you spoke to my heart, not my ears. Mm -hmm. And I thought that is the beauty of actual, we're gonna talk about love, but actual mm -hmm. love is when the person, when the words don't just touch your ears, mm -hmm. but they touch your heart. Mm -hmm. And like, that's what Whitney did for me. That music didn't just touch my ears and stay there. Mm -hmm. It actually moved from my ears and went all the way down through my soul into my heart. All right, we're going to take a little break here and then we're going to come back and talk about heart. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Give some more than others because some accept more than others. Life is a mirror and will reflect back to the thinker what he thinks into it. Ernest Holmes. Welcome back. Now is Carl's surprise question of the week. <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> I love this so much. I just decided I'm going to do this every single week just because I just because it's funny. <laughs> All right. So one person name one person who you never met who had a great effect on your entire life. Hmm. Well, I, I would certainly um, for me say <clears throat> Oprah Winfrey is a woman who's had a great effect on my life. Um, you know, she, what can you say about Oprah? I mean, she's just been such a powerful force. And, and, and for me, you know, as I've watched her over the years and she's been able to really connect with people, connect with the audience and really um, teach people people you know how to um, enjoy their life and really live their best life and I think that's one of the reasons why I even got into coaching and you know the love area and so forth is you know seeing you know how there has you know 
And so many broken hearts and, you know, so many um, people struggling in that area. And it can be such a complex, complicated area that if I could help um, provide some guidance and support, um, it just meant so much to me. So, you know, Oprah just has opened so many doors for so many people and has just um, brought a whole sense of awareness of, of the world we live in today and, mm -hmm. and how to take better care of ourselves and how to nurture that mind, body, spirit. So mm -hmm. sh she would be one person. Yeah. You know, and Oprah is interesting in that I think that she came out as the common person. And then she did something that was uncommon. Because in talk show, talk shows had all gone to Jerry Springerism. Yeah. yeah. And everyone was on and they were telling their whole life story. My sister slept with my brothers and two dogs and cats and you know <laughs> yeah. and it just got to be television when you turned it on. I thought, oh really, this is really happening and people will actually go on television and talk about this portion of their life mm -hmm. and be okay with that. And Oprah did a little bit of that. There was a little probably one Early season. On. Yeah, well, a little maybe a yeah. season and a half. <clears throat> But I love when she came out and she just said, I'm not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. And she stepped into positive television. Mm -hmm. And I think that she was, that was a, a, a brave step to step into positive television because the negative sells. I don't know why. I wish that it didn't. But negative, for some reason, sells. You have house, what, housewives of everywhere. And all they do is fight and bicker. And for some reason, people think that's cute. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to spend an hour Listening to, if I wanted to listen to people bicker, I'd go visit my family. <laughs> I don't need to pay to listen to someone fight and scream, you know, period. Right. Um, so I think that Oprah opened up the door for a more positive type of talk show. Yeah. And you see talk shows now have moved. Well, unfortunately, not all of them, because there still is the Jerry Springer sure. television shows where people get on and, you know, t tell way more than they need to. But I think that uh, she was, Oprah was an innovator. She started something different. She called, us all, she called on all of us and said, okay, now can we be interested in something that's positive? And I think that that's the reason why she's developed the, the viewership that she did is because there were enough people out there that really wanted something positive. Yeah, we got to see the commonality between all of us. You yeah. know, someone's going through, you know, an issue, that's something that I could learn from, that I could use, or I'm going through it. I mm. can help someone else. And I think she really helped to helped us to see better th the bond that goes through all of us and mm. how we're all so connected. Yeah. And I think she also wasn't afraid to show her shortcomings. Yeah. And I think that's a very uh, wonderful thing because we look at those people, those celebrities, those icons, and we think they're better than we are. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, with the people, especially the people that I've met, they're no different than you or me, mm -hmm. and probably uh, less secure than we are. Because we get to go to Walmart just because we feel like it. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> you know <laughs> we can wake up in the morning, wash your face, brush your teeth, walk out the door, go anywhere you want to go and don't have to worry about it. Where, you know, I was looking when Whitney Houston died, they had pictures of her actually being taken out of the hotel room. Who is there to take pictures of that? But for some reason, they do it because that's what people want to see. Yeah. And unfortunately, when people stop watching that, when people stop saying to the world that I want to see everyone die, I, I want to see them come out of their, you know, when Anna Nicole died, they had to show her body and this. And it's unnecessary. And it's, it's just uh, not the direction that I would hope the world would move in. But unfortunately, that's what sells. And people do what sells. And one of the reasons why I think we enjoy doing this show so much is because we're, we're part of that movement where mm. we're going to um, talk about issues and we're going to share of ourselves that um, hopefully our audience can connect with and mm. learn from and grow from. And, mm. and, and that's one of the reasons why I, I do enjoy mm. you know, doing this show. Well, the audience is definitely learning to grow with me. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> I've had worse days and better days, <laughs> for sure. So, Casey, now it's your turn. Um, I would have to say one of the greatest person I wish I would have been able to meet is Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. And because he was just, he just wanted man to do better. Mm -hmm. You know, he wanted races to, to intermingle, and he wanted uh, a better life for everybody. You know, mm -hmm. he said, okay, let's, let's get rid of this color thing. Can we just treat each other like kings? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Um, and I just think his legacy is going to live on forever. And I don't know that we would ever have another Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. uh, I think some people have tried, but they've been more self-centered. Mm -hmm. Kind of 
put himself at risk every time mm -hmm. he stepped out there just for the common person. You didn't have to be rich. Um, mm -hmm. You didn't have to be poor. You didn't have to be anybody in the middle. He was just looking to make sure that everybody was treated equally. And he touched people across the globe. Mm -hmm. And I think that takes a special person to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. To make that change like that. And then if I could just reach back in time to say thank you for all the people who used to scrub our floor. Mm -hmm. Because it's their tenacity. Um, their perseverance that let us get beyond just scrubbing floors, but we can actually own the buildings where those floors are being scrubbed now. Mm -hmm. And we can do just about anything that we want. And I think we've forgotten um, just how much people before us have done so we could have the generation that we have now. We have we are accessible to everything. And although, um, you know, we moved out of blatant racency, uh, racism, it's still there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not so much a color thing now, I think it's class now. Because mm -hmm. even, you know, people who are not of the same race but of the same class, they've been looked down upon because people, you know, are making much more run money nowadays than they have in the past. Mm -hmm. So I think if we can just get to a state of equality, whether mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what color you are or how much money you're making, I just think we would be um, much better off as a race of people, period. Not like black, mm -hmm. white, green, whatever. It's just a human race getting along across the globe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I could just reach back and just say thank you for all those people who believe mm -hmm. in something better to come, I would just be so excited. I would have to say for me it would be my Angelo because I love the power of a word. Mm -hmm. And words can be put together in combinations that can change the world. Um, they can stop wars. They can uh, liberate nations. It, they can change economies. It, the word is so powerful. And people don't realize or recognize often even their own words, you know, how they can affect negatively or positively another person. And I hope that in my life, my, my strive is to always lay down words, lay down the tracks that become the soundtracks to other people's lives. The, to pull out words and pull, put them together in combinations that allow people to grow and share and feel better about themselves, feel better about their situations. Because I, I know that there are a lot of people out there just like me who have the same common problems, who have the same common hangups, who you know, have the same financial problems, the same uh, spiritual problems. Because, you know, um, I was talking to a friend on the phone and we were talking about spirituality. And, and she said, well, if God came down tomorrow and it was, it, he looked like Barney, I said, well, you know what? I'd have to just believe in that. <laughs> because, you know, you, we, we guesstimate so many things. And we get so stuck on this is the way things have to be. Words melt that. And then word, you, know, you put those words together in combinations. Uh, the greatest love of all. Learning to love yourself is the greatest love of all. <laughs> you can't forget that. And on days when you don't feel that self-love, when you're, the love is hard to find, you can go and you can play that song and you know the greatest love I found inside of me. And that's where it is. And... Um, just those couple of words help people escalate to higher levels. And I think that, so for me, my goal in life is to write words that inspire people. So I love inspirational words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Valentine's Day in love. Valentine's Day in love. <laughs> yes, yeah, so here we are. And, you know, I was, as I was preparing um, what I was going to say today, I kind of came in and had a whole bunch of tips and things you know you should do when you're in a relationship or and when you're single and and so on and so forth but i wanted to keep it really simple mm. and so um you know for valentine's day if you're a couple and you're in a relationship i think the most important way to show your love is to show that appreciation for that person you know mm be thankful for the relationship um you know you may be going through struggles you know you may be having your ups and downs but looking for you know what is what is it about that person um that makes me want to continue to stay in this relationship why do i why do i still choose to be here mm -hmm. um and, and really looking to see the positives in it and valentine's day <laughs> is just the catalyst you know mm -hmm. it, it's Valentine's Day is my belief that it should be every day. You know, it's not just one day a year that you decide, okay, I'm going to be nice to you. <laughs> I'm going to go out and buy you roses and buy you flowers. And then the rest of the year, I ignore you. Right. Now, this mm -hmm. is the day that we're going to start that pattern. We're going to get into 
that habit of showing my love, you know, showing how much you mean to me, showing that I care and start to, you know, build this relationship into what I want it to be. Mm -hmm. So we can go in and talk more about that. But that's what I have to say um, for couples and for singles, um, because I work with a lot of singles um, on their relationships and wanting to be in a relationship. And Valentine's Day can be a really tough day for them because mm -hmm. Valentine's Day is the one day that you know whether or not you're single. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, every, every commercial and every company lets you know that. Yeah. Yes. No roses? Know. What's wrong with you? <laughs> exactly. You know for sure you're single on Valentine's Day. And so to all my singles, I say, um, you may not be in the relationship you want to be in right now. You may not have that love in your life. But you do have love in your life. So start to look at that. Even if it's love from your family, mm -hmm. love from your friends, love from a pet, mm -hmm. you know, you do have love in your life and start to appreciate that, you know, be grateful for that, have gratitude for that. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the most important things is to have love for yourself, mm -hmm. you know, don't beat yourself up, okay, that you don't have a date from, on Valentine's Day, you're not getting flowers today start to appreciate who you are. You can go and buy yourself roses if you so desire, but you know, it starts there and um, you know, we can talk about that more, but that's the most important messages that I wanted to share with my singles and couples today on Valentine's Day, appreciation for the love that's in your life. I used to work in an office and every Valentine's Day, all the women in the office, they would get flowers and candy and this and that. And at the time I was single and uh, that was a long time ago that I worked in the office, by the way. I've talked about it many times. Terrible at office work. <laughs> Don't hire me. <laughs> but I decided one Valentine's Day that everyone else was going to get flowers and candy. So you know what I did? I had flowers shipped to myself. And people kept asking me where they came from. And I said, oh, it says... Secret from a, admirer? Yeah, it's, for, it's from a secret <laughs> admirer. I don't know where they came from. And then that night I went out to dinner by myself. But you know what I found out? What? I went out to dinner by myself. There were a lot of couples out. But... I was looking around the room at the forced uh, part of the evening. Mm. And I thought, you know, sitting here by myself, I don't have to force anything. The other thing was is that I attracted love to me by being by myself because people came over and said, oh, you're by yourself. <laughs> and, but I made friends that way. So then I started talking to this couple over here. And then I found out what their problems were. And I thought, well, glad I'm not in that relationship. <laughs> we go back to my table and sit down. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> And then I'd go to the next table and, you know, I was walking around playing Cupid, you know, like, <laughs> how's your relationship going? How are you feeling? <laughs> and by the end, I'd forgotten all about being lonely because yeah. I had met a lot of people and actually had a very good time. But mm -hmm. I may have irritated a few people in the restaurant, <laughs> <laughs> but I had a good time. So, uh, I, And that is wonderful. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's just a part of the crazy Carl that, <laughs> that exists. But I think you have to, to jump off the edge sometimes. Mm -hmm. And don't let the television dictate your day. Yeah. You know, the television mm -hmm. will tell you a whole bunch of things. My mother sits home and she watches television all day long, unfortunately for her, because I try to pull her up out of it. But I'll come home and she'll tell me, you know apples, da-da-da-da-da? You know, or you really should be taking apple cider vinegar every day for this and this and this. And then... By the time I stop and listen to all the things that she said I should do every day, I said, I would be sitting here all day long just taking spoons of stuff that you think is good because you sat there and let the television really tell you how you're supposed to feel. Mm -hmm. And people do the how you're, how you're supposed to look, what your body's supposed to look like, mm -hmm. um, how you're supposed to wear your hair, um, what cologne you're supposed to wear. Someone said to me that I wore 20-year-old cologne. And that was so funny to me because I wear John Paul Gaultier. I've worn it for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm loyal to my cologne. <laughs> but I believe, I believe that you should smell like you smell. So I want, when I walk in the room, people say, oh, Carl's in the room because I smell him. <laughs> That's what Carl smells like. And I just never understood the, the, the thing about wearing a whole bunch of different colognes because I love the way somebody smells. Mm -hmm. and, love yeah, and I love knowing that when I pick up that T-shirt and smell it, I think, this belongs to the person that I love because I know that. Mm -hmm. I remember I used to take t-shirts with me and sleep with them when I was on the road just so I could smell them. I just have that weird sense of, of smell. <laughs> but it was comforting. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. 
So, so come on, give me some love. Give me some love suggestions for Valentine's Day. I'm sitting home. I'm by myself. I don't do what I did. <laughs> Are you good? Are you good? But give me a suggestion. What could I do to make myself feel better today? Uh, well, certainly um, not being in a love funk and feeling the lack of love in your life. So again, starting to look at the love that you already have in your life is one. Hopping in a movie, you know, mm. something that makes you laugh. Nothing, you know? nothing about love. Not Valentine's Day. <laughs> well, it, well it, could, it, it could be because, you know, you do have some romantics at heart mm. and they love to see, you know, a good romance on TV. If mm. it's going to make you sad and angry, then no, do not pop that in. Mm. But you can certainly pop in something that's going to make you laugh. Um, you can certainly do something. You don't have to necessarily sit home. You know, you, mm. could, you can get out of the house and, mm. you know... Go, go grab a bite to eat, order mm. in, you know, do something that will make you feel good. Mm. You know, whether it's pampering yourself, you know, taking a bath, doing your nails, listening to great music. I mean, there's just so much you can do, but mm. don't, sl you know, slide down into that funk of, oh my gosh, I'm, I don't have anyone. I'm never going to have anyone, mm. you know. Look my how, life is over. Look how old I am. Right. <laughs> what I mean, am I going to do? Because you know what? Having those kinds of feelings, I understand, especially on a day like today, it's mm. natural to feel that anxiety and to feel that, that sense of um, hopelessness. But, you know, it, Valentine's Day is one day. It's mm. um, going to pass. And, you know, you want to start to generate those feelings of you know, feeling good about yourself, feeling good about the prospects. I always mm. say that your love life is getting brighter and brighter no matter what you've been through you know you still have an opportunity to you know create the love the kind of love that you want in your life and, and like you said you know you were out at that restaurant there were a whole bunch of couples there you were there alone mm -hmm. yet you being the you know having the personality you had mm -hmm. i mean you walked around and you know started to converse with all the couples i'm not saying someone has to do that but as you were doing that you felt good you started to attract love to you because you started talking to other people. And that's the key. If you were sitting off at the table by yourself, crying. just crying, <laughs> sulking, <laughs> saying nobody loves me, da 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 mm. no one would want to be anywhere around you. And mm. that's the same when you're sitting at home by yourself. If, if, if you're feeling those feelings of sadness and loneliness, okay, give yourself a time period. I'm going to feel sorry for myself for 10 minutes. Mm. That's it. Find something else to do. Yeah, call a friend, you know. A, I was going to say call a single friend, but maybe <laughs> the two of you together. I'm not sure if that would be the best idea. <laughs> right, because you might start commiserating together. But, you know, you can call, I don't know, a couple that who's been married a long time. What's the key to making it work? You know, how, how can I, what are things that I should be looking for um, when I'm out there dating and things like that? Being proactive and not sulking because you don't have love on Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important to pull on your love lessons. And so I'm going to ask you both your biggest love lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like to go first, Casey? <laughs> I think um, it's not losing who I am. Mm. Uh, sometimes when you're in relationships with people, you uh, get so wrapped up in that relationship and being with that person, you forget who you are. You know, you no longer call your friends, you no longer do things that you used to do before you got into a relationship. So for me, the biggest lesson I've learned is to also, you know, love myself and make sure I'm still uh, loving me and mm -hmm. loving the people that I were in my corner before I got into a relationship. So that was the biggest lesson learned for me. I love that. Uh, one of my biggest lessons, I would say, is learning how to forgive. Mm. You know, learning, you're in a relationship, things happen, being able to forgive the other person, mm. not being able to hold something against them, um, and most importantly, learning how to forgive myself. I, you know, I did the best I could mm. at that time with the knowledge and information that I had. So being mm. able to forgive myself and... Um, being able to move forward and not hold the bitterness, the anger, the, the other uh, jealousy, you know, the mm. negative emotions mm -hmm. um, with me, really able, really being able to um, let it go mm -hmm. and move forward and know that something better is on the way. Mm -hmm. For me, it was stop judging love because I had expectations of love. Mm -hmm. And when love didn't meet my expectations, then it was love's fault. It was never my fault. Mm -hmm. And learning that in a relationship, uh, it's about we 
and not I. And I went to get blood drawn yesterday and the lady who drew my blood, we had started talking about love. It just came up. And I said that in my relationship, what I'm learning is how to turn off the I and turn on the we. And she thought I was talking about the game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, no, let's back up. I didn't mean the we. I meant mm -hmm. the we in the situation. Mm -hmm. And um, when I could get to that, what's the block, the, you know, the, the, ugh, the wall, the, the, I can't get through to you. I want to shake you. I, I, what I go back to is how did I fall in love with you in the first place? Yeah. And I reflect back at those things. You know, um, what is it about you that I do love? And um, opposed to what is it about you that makes me so angry? Because we can get so caught up in, you do this, and I'm so angry. Mm -hmm. But drop what makes you so angry mm -hmm. and go back to the love. Mm -hmm. Because when, yeah, when you go back to, you know, I just really love your eyes, Jennifer, and I do. Oh, <laughs> but, <laughs> and what just do I appreciate, appreciate about, about you? you. Yeah. 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 But it's so easy to find the things that are negative or the things that are hard or the things that, you know, because when you're in love, it's an everyday struggle, you know, because you're two different people mm -hmm. trying to become one, not one person, but one spirit, one, one thought, one heart, one, you know, and it's virtually impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, we can get our heart to beat practically at the same time, but our hearts are never going to beat exactly at the same time. It's just not going to happen. And learning how to forgive myself when I forget those things. Because yeah. there are going to be days I forget. There are going to be days when I come home and we're going to have this conversation and I'm going to forget how beautiful your eyes are. And I'm going to forget the fact that I just love the way that you walk. And I'm going to forget that I love the smile that you put on my face. When someone else mentions your name to me mm -hmm. and I smile, mm -hmm. I feel good. And it's not, you're not even in the room. But mm -hmm. someone asked me, how is your partner? And my face lights up, mm -hmm. then I remember, you know, actually, I do love you. And it's easy to get caught up in the reasons why I'm angry today or the reasons why I'm, my lo love is being blocked today. But just like with all of us, remember that we don't know when our last moment is going to be. And the last thing that I would want is to leave this earth angry mm -hmm. or in the middle of an argument or not loving someone that I really love and not being able to say, I love you. So my biggest love lesson is that no matter what, when I leave the room, I leave the conversation, I say, I love you. Yeah. 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 And one of the sections in my book is love and forgive yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer, you touched on that. And I think it's so important as we go through life that, you know, you do what you do, what you do at the time with everything that you have. And mm -hmm. as you get older and wiser, then you learn more from your lesson from the past, but you can't, you know, beat yourself up. You know, you, you only did at that moment in time with, you know, what you had, the tools that you had at the time. So I think you have to love yourself and forgive yourself so that you can move on. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so many people get stuck in what they did in the past. And how could I have done that? I should have known better. You didn't know any better at the right. time. Mm -hmm. And so you, to get past that, you've got to love yourself, forgive yourself, and move on with life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it just continues. And we're all touching on that, that appreciation for your partner, that appreciation for the people in your life, mm -hmm. single or married, you know, coupled up or not, having that love and that appreciation for someone else, because we don't know how long we have. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to leave you with love yourself. I love you for being here and taking your time and actually just listening to what we have to say. Uh, have a wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Jennifer, we'll see you soon. Casey, we love you for being here. Jennifer, I love you for being here. Carl. Spread the love. <laughs> <laughs> see you soon. An honest man is always a child. Socrates.